Hello everybody, it's The Last Raider. We are back with another video. And uh, today I was scrolling through my Twitter feed and uh, ran into this nerd wonder. Wonderful person. If you ever find them on Twitter, they're just happy-go-lucky. You'll have a wonderful day with them. They're always bright. They always try to be bright and sunny. And their tweets are always nice. Some of them are actually funny, make me laugh during the day. <laughs> so I follow her on here. She's also uh, been hinting she's got a book coming out. I mean, I would like to see it, if possible. I'd like to see that. But we're not big enough. I don't think that's going to happen. So, um, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to see that. We'll probably wait till the uh, the Indiegogo drops. But anyway, Nerd Wonder puts out a story, <laughs> puts out a tweet uh, that got me to thinking. And I thought, you know, I, I might as well answer this. Because the, the answer um, is quite simple, if you, if you want to know. But here's the question. Has anyone else noticed that a lot of new superhero characters have their stories written like a cartoon villain, bully, telling a story? You ever see the episode of Regrets where Angelica doodles her life, or in Ed, Ed, and Eddie, where they explain to Johnny why they are stuck? That it's that. Now, I don't know about, um, I don't think I've seen, I can't remember the Rugrats episode, and I never saw a lot of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I saw some. But as far as, you know, these characters being written like a cartoon villain or bully telling a story. Part of the reason that it sounds like a villain or bully is because you have to understand what is the difference between a hero and a villain. And you have to understand that most of the people that are writing comics nowadays are villains. Or they have a villain's mentality. Uh, if you look at a hero, a hero doesn't sit back and blame society uh for their woes. They don't blame anyone else. They buckle down and they get crap done. They not they're not going to sit back and say it's this person's fault that I'm in this position. It's that person's fault. Peter Parker never really blamed everyone. He blamed himself for being Spider-Man a lot of times. Okay? Uh, but it was also him being Spider-Man that enabled him to get things done. Uh, I think there was one comic book uh, story with Spider-Man in which Spider-Man had to get an isotope for Aunt May to save her. And so he can't be there as Peter Parker to console her, but as Spider-Man he has the ability to do so. And it, it kind of bothered him a bit. It also put, it also made uh, MJ got, <laughs> kind of got there was a cover where MJ was pissed at him because she's there taking care of Aunt May and Peter Parker is, is out the wind. She's like, why isn't Peter here with his aunt in her time of need? And Peter Parker's outside fighting with Green Goblin or something trying to get this isotope back to the hospital. So the thing about heroes you have to also remember is heroes do are not, they're not, um, they're not people who want to take things into their own hands. They take stuff to their own hands usually to an extent. Batman is an example of a, you know, just a hero who takes the law into his hands to a certain point. He he does not, and I'm kind of trying to be as careful as I can be with this. Batman, in my opinion, does not see people as wholly evil. He sees them as messed up. And so the whole thing, Bruce Wayne's whole deal is if things have been different, if justice had been served, if society operated in the way it was supposed to, or at least the way it is supposed to operate without the corruption in the law and everything, that the night his parents died probably never happened. He does all this stuff to prevent that from happening. Now, he also doesn't want to kill anyone. So Batman does everything he can to reform these people. There's actually a, um, what was it? There was a Batman, the animated series episode where Bruce Wayne actually pays for a surgery to take care of Harvey Dent to try and do recorrective surgery onto the right side of Harvey Dent's face so that he doesn't have the two face. Cause it would, cause psychologically, if he's not seeing it all the time, the doctors believe that they remove that physical appearance of Harvey's second side or his extra personality, that it would ultimately kill his second personality, which would be Two Face himself. And so while he's doing, and so it goes in this big, big deal where Two Face actually takes back. He actually orders some of his men to kidnap Harvey Dent and get him out of there. 
and whatnot. It, it, it ended up being a good episode. But there are plenty of episodes where Batman, you know, like with the Joker or the Killing Joke, for instance, where Batman at the very end of it, after everything the Joker's done, Batman's a hero where he goes, I want to help you. After everything that you've done, I want to help you. After everything you've done to Commissioner Gordon, he still wants you taken alive. After all the crap that you have done to him and his daughter, he's, he's still standing by the law, and I'm going to stand by it, and I want to help you. The Joker refuses. There's some debate whether Batman kills him at the end or not. I think most people... But the thing is, that's what a hero does. They Usually a hero is given power, but they refuse to exercise it unless absolutely necessary. Superman's not going to go down there and deliver earth-shattering blows to bad guys. He's going to... He's going to first just take their stuff and like he'll just take their guns and usually bend it. That's one of the reasons why Superman does the 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 trope where a superhero grabs hold of a gun and then they just kind of bend it or or turn it into a little ball and hand it back to the guy. It's it's a um, it's a point of look. This is what I can do. This is the futility of the situation. Be smart and just give up. With SJWs, this is not the case. If you've ever seen them in on Twitter, you'll learn that they really want bad things to happen to people. It's just the mindset of what they think of what's going to happen. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver's a good point. One person, or and met Richard Myers. Richard Myers, at one point, I think it was Gail Simone or Mags Visaggio, I think it was. I think it was Mags Visaggio who said they wanted to take a ball bat to Myers' teeth. In other words, if they ever got the chance to do that, they would probably do it. Okay, if you're 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 putting this out there. Uh, if you look at Antifa, Antifa gets a mob of people together. They get a small army and they go out. And what do they do? They go out and they try to right wrongs or what they perceive as wrong. Uh, if SJWs get into power, they start removing people who they think don't deserve to be at a company. Uh, take YouTube, for instance, does this a lot. Google does it a lot. The reason it sounds like a villain is because the different SJWs respond to villains and like villains better than they like heroes. They're always cynical of heroes because if you ever listen, it's like, well, there's no point. Batman keeps putting the Joker in jail, but the Joker just keeps breaking out. One, Batman's putting him in Arkham Asylum to try and save the man. He understands that the Joker is suffering from mental disability. That's the problem with the Joker. He's crazy. If Batman can save this guy and bring him back. I think that's kind of why the why the White Knight, why Batman White Knight ended up doing so well because it showed what would happen to the Joker if he became, you know, sane. And he becomes sane and he like fixes most of Gotham. He solves a lot of problems. Usually this is a very it's sort of a, a redemption point. It's kind of like um there's actually um a a hero in biblical lore uh such as Paul. Paul is one of the is considered one of the best missionaries in the Bible. Yet, if you look at his early life, he was a man that went out and executed Christians. He killed them. And then he has a he has a moment of clarity, and he becomes one of the greatest disciples. In fact, most of the churches of, uh, most of the Christian churches look over and they will tell you it's because of the Apostle Paul. Because there's actually a point in the Bible where Paul asks God, do I want, or he's praying to Jesus, and he says, I am willing to go over to Asia and spread the and spread the gospel and Jesus is like no go to Rome. And they they've stated that if Paul had gone to Asia Christianity and western a lot of what was western society would have taken hold in Asia. Instead, it came to Rome and came to the west, which started all you know most of western society and everything. So the idea and I'm just going off on a tangent here about you know how you could redeem people. This is the concept uh, like with White Knight. White Knight showed that if you take someone as intelligent as the Joker and make them sane and compassionate, look at how much good he can do. And it solidifies the reasoning behind Batman going out there and not killing people. Uh, in my opinion, Batman will go out there and it, th there is a point, you know, where Batman's kind of just sort of almost not that he hates the Joker. He's just desperate to stop the Joker. He's trying to minimize the damage before someone, before a cop gets in there and gets a lucky shot on the Joker and kills him. He, he honestly, he's so desperate, he causes more problems. It's a really good book. Y'all sh y'all should seriously read it <laughs> if you get a chance. The first one's good. I haven't seen the second one yet. I have to get it. But anywho, back back to the point of SJWs here. The thing with SJWs is they don't 
they they look at Batman, they say, well, he should just kill off the Joker because most of them are short-sighted. They don't think about long-term effects. If the Batman can save the Joker, there are other people that are worse than the Joker. The there, there's all the stuff that could you know, and, go, and going back to saving the Joker and taking and you know curing him of his uh, I don't know what you would call it psychosis or sociopathism. I don't know. He's more of a psychopath than a sociopath. That's a uh, that's a debate for later. Anyway. If you end up saving the Joker, you could end up having a trickle down effect because all the knowledge. It's it's like you know you you if you were to fix the coronavirus and solve it now, you could apply that research to other viruses. The trickle down effect. You do the the idea of saving one man to the hero is that it will end up helping others. To SJWs, no, they just want to. They see the one man that's causing problems. Let's just kill him because if we kill him, he kills no more people. That just makes that that would save all these people afterward. Problem is, to the hero, you don't save that person. And also, a hero practices restraint. If there's no need to kill a man, then a hero is not going to do it. And this doesn't qualify for antiheroes. This is more like the archetype heroes. But with SJWs, like I said, if you look at whenever they get inside of places. Uh, any positions of influence, they're immediately going in. Look at Vic Mignogna. Look at, um, what else? Richard Myers. Look at Ethan Van Skyver. Look at all these people who have gone in and they go against the grain. They don't have the right politics. And therefore, the SJWs that are in charge or in the area, they conspire and try to eliminate that person. Uh, if you want to know if you want to see a good test, ask. It's kind of the the concept with Ben Shapiro a while back. Ben Shapiro uh, did it did it perfectly. He said, "No, I would not kill baby Hitler." He's a Jew, mind you, knowing full well what Hitler could do, because he states this and he says, "Killing baby Hitler." He said, "You don't." He said, "Hitler is a product of all his experiences leading up to the man." If you if you kill baby Hitler, you're just killing the baby before they've been influenced. A child is malleable, okay? They're like soft clay. When you get to an adult, you're more like hard rock. You're already solidified in a lot of the things that you're going to become. But as a, a baby is like soft clay, they can be molded by their experiences through life. So there's no reason to kill it. SJWs, however, would say, yes, I go back in time and I kill baby Hitler. That is noble. No, it's not. To a hero, that is not noble, because they under because a hero realizes no, just because this guy can become this person, doesn't mean that they will. And if you have the ability, also that that kind of falls into the point of if you have the ability to go back in time and kill baby Hitler, why not just go back in time to the point where Hitler was going to make that decision and kind of you know give him a gentle nudge in the right direction, change him into a better person. That would that would still save the Jew that would still save all the Jews that were killed. It would stop probably an entire world war from starting. But instead, no, we want to go back and kill him because killing him is much easier. And this is also another reason why SGW sound like villains. Villains want to take the easy route all the time. That usually instead of making money the right way, they want to go steal the money. Okay? Stealing the money is much easier than making the money. The making the money requires hard work. Stealing the money from a bank is much easier. If they have a problem with someone, instead of trying to figure out an intellectual way of dealing with it, they go off and try to kill them. Uh, if they have a problem with society, they try to violently change it instead of trying to gently change it, which is, you know, most people, are, most villains, they're, they're basically lazy in a lot of aspects. Their mindset is, we want to do this, we want to do this now. They're also very impatient. So SJWs, in a sense, they're the same way. They're very lazy. Uh, you look at the art styles from Marvel nowadays, it's it sucks. You look at the, the paper that it's printed on, it sucks. Uh, you look at, um, as far as the way that they do things, they want to pump politics into comic books because they want change to happen now. And change doesn't happen now. Change happens over time. People must make the decision to change. It's why um, It's why one pastor of mine told me, he said, it's not a noble thing. He said, people who are very, uh, who are, it's better to be a religious servant than a religious zealot. He said, because a servant waits on someone else to make, waits on someone to make a decision. A zealot goes out there and tries to force someone. Yeah, you've seen the, uh, what is it? The Walmart Karen, 
where she's screaming and yelling at people that, oh, you're all going to go to, you're going to go to hell. That's not solving anything. That's not making anybody go to, want to go to heaven. They're just looking at them like a crazy person. And that's making them put up, you see immediately people start putting up walls and, and telling her to buzz off. Also saying MF her the whole time doesn't actually help either. But it, you take that in comparison to someone who, a Christian who stops on the side of the road and sees a couple people heading to a, a pride march and they've got a busted tire. And so this guy stops, picks them up, takes them to a gas, takes them to like a tire place, helps them get a tire, comes back, fixes their tire in the rain. And afterward, they're like, uh, can we pay anything? Anything else? Say, no. Uh, what you can do is I've got a church on down the road. If y'all would like to come to it, uh, this is where we're at. And it's totally up to you. And the, just consider it. And that will be payment enough. And that bit of charity right there is usually enough to change people. It's kind of like the sun and the wind. Also, another thing is like the sun and the wind, you know, the, the Aesop Sable, if you've never heard of it. But anyway, <clears throat> as I said, SJWs, in essence, they just relate to villains more. That's why they want, that's why you also see the deconstruction of actual heroes. That's why you see Superman snapping a person's neck and, and, and committing to killing. They, they always want to explore Batman killing people, Superman killing people, uh, Wonder Woman siding with a bunch of chicks over in uh, Vietnam or something and turning them into warriors and, and killing off men and, and all this nonsense, or wanting Wonder Woman to be this man hating feminist wearing pants. They they don't like these heroes, and they want to change the... They know that people like the heroes, so they want the heroes that people like to be changed to look more like the villains they admire, except then they don't become heroes anymore, and they become villains. <clears throat> and they want people... They like the villains more, so they want to see the villains do more stuff and get around. And they're always written cartoony and, and all this other nonsense. But that's why it sounds like they're coming from the story. Also, it's like as far as the villains being cartoony, most of these idiots do not write very well. Because when you start infusing politics into something, you start losing storytelling art. By the way, I'd like to thank uh, Your Nerd Wonder. If y'all haven't seen her, she's at Your Nerd Wonder. And I might try to get a link to her Twitter page in the channel. I might link my Twitter page in the uh, description as well. That'll be, that'll be where you find both the Twitter handles. Because I'm going to try to help get some people over to her channel a bit more, you know. Over or to uh, her Twitter page because she did give me this idea and I was reading those like oh that'll make a nice video so thank you Nerd Wonder for the positivity and for the video that today also if you guys uh, are doing anything today also be sure to uh, comment like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and hit the notification bell and as always uh, stay safe stay frosty and I'll see you guys in the next video.